Come the hell there, neighborinos. <clears throat> Got just a small handful of stories for you tonight. But the first one is about something is about a list of games I'm going to call system sellers. Now, what is a system seller, you may be asking? Do you have any games or any systems that you wouldn't be playing without that game? For the games I might be referring to are God of War or Marvel's newly released Spider-Man for the PS4, or maybe Halo or Forza or Gears of War for the Xbox, or I, I don't know, any, any, or maybe Beat Saber for VR. Major titles that would make you pay the exorbitant price of getting whatever hardware is necessary to play that game. Are what games do you think of when it comes to virtual reality? What would you consider a system seller for virtual reality? Something to make you pay the thousand dollars or whatever it takes to to set up a virtual reality system in your room with all the lines and all the tethers and everything that you would need to play that game. What games come to mind? See, right there, that right there. That list is rather small, isn't it? That list of games that would make you want to pay as much as necessary to play that game. This is this list is important for two reasons. First, virtual reality is not mainstream yet, and as a result, the cost rate, the cost of setting up that system is arguably very high. Because it's high, it can't really reach into the mainstream. It, because it can't reach into the mainstream, it major publishers and developers don't want to don't want to spend the time, energy and resources necessary to build a game that will sell. They don't want to spend that manpower to create a system seller. Now Oculus Oculus's Sean Liu argues that we need to develop that hardware. Thankfully, with the Quest coming out soon, and Cartcraft coming out soon, Cartcraft I'll end up getting to here in a second, but the Quest in particular, as I've stated in a couple videos in the past, <coughs> the Quest is going to be more of a mid-tier virtual reality system, but it is also going to be standalone on a lower cost pedestal than the HTC or the PlayStation VR or even the the base Rift or Rift S that have been out all those other systems have been out already the Vive Rift and the PlayStation VR those ones have been out but they have a much higher cost for entry However, because the Quest is going to have that, that lower cost, that is going to allow more games to reach the mainstream, and as a result, it's going to bring more availability to its consumers, and therefore, their, uh, more, more eyeballs are going to be on it, let's say. As a result, more developers are going to be willing to spend those resources to to get those eyeballs on their product but problem here is that the quest is primarily just going to get ports from the other systems as a result it is not going it may not get the traction it needs to grow But again, 
Mr. Liu argues that we need we need these we need these games. We need these system sellers. And I believe that Cardcraft, the game I mentioned earlier, may help with that. In the in the page that will be linked down below, you'll find that Oculus has worked on a space on the asynchronous space warp technology. This this system of technology will allow lower end PCs to be able to support virtual reality. And why do I bring this up? Because that may be the way that these lower end systems like the Quest, for example, can play higher quality games. Games that would otherwise take much more energy than what the Quest would normally be able to would normally be able to exert. What does that mean? It means that all those eyeballs that are are waiting to look at the at VR as a whole, they they may be coming soon. All all of those ideas that we're missing from virtual reality in, in the gaming world, those may be coming. And Ocu between Oculus's ASW technology and HTC's work in smartphones and 5G technology, virtual reality gaming may hit mainstream soon. The next bit of news is a little bit of a game changer. Uh, so as some of you may have already heard, the PlayStation 5 will be launching here in 2020 at the relatively high price of $500, likely, or maybe even six, depending on depending on the way they want to market this thing. But anyway, because this thing is going to have an arguably high price tag, we also need to speculate a little bit on what the VR2 is going to be coming out at. When the original PlayStation VR debuted, it launched at approximately $400, if I remember correctly. However, because this one is not only going to have higher quality technology and be wireless, we could likely expect it to be sitting at around 500. Now, couple that with the with the $500 price tag sitting on the PlayStation 5. That is $1,000 to spend on getting any PlayStation 5 VR games. But what if I told you that that Sony is already trying to amend that cost? You, you would say I'm crazy, right? That Sony doesn't look out for their customers or something. But sticking to their tagline for the players, they have, they have stated that VR is something important to them. And uh, one thing that is quite important that you may be able to look forward to is that your current PlayStation VR headset may still be compatible with the PlayStation 5. So you don't need to worry about getting the next headset right away. You can still budget for that, assuming that you won't readily have those funds available. Now, I, I don't know if you're going to be able to save the, the 500 between now and next March. You probably can. It's like a year away. You should be able to just like put 50 bucks away every month. I, I believe in you. I believe in you. And then that way, 
<coughs> you can do the same thing, put 50 bucks away every month between then and when you feel you are capable of of getting the PlayStation VR 2. Getting that wireless headset is going to be good, but not a necessity. So, bit of good news there. The other, the next bit of news is about an upcoming game called Spice and Wolf that is set to debut on the on June 3rd for the Vive, the Rift, and of course the Rift S, and sometime in the summer for PlayStation VR and the Quest. So this game is based on the manga, also called Spice and Wolf. Uh, so I'm not really familiar with this thing. So when I pulled up the Wikipedia page for it, it talked about it talked about a traveling merchant try, trying to escape a church or trying to escape the church with a deity, assuming they have some kind of count combat mechanics in there. It may be interesting, but the but based on the plot of the manga that's in the Wikipedia page, it seems more like you're focusing on the shopkeeper aspects rather than the fleeing the church part. But as of course, as always, those links are going to be in the description below. So if you guys feel like checking it out, be my guest. Okay, so my final story of the night is about a demonstration day that's going to be held by a program called Capital Region AR VR Accelerator. This demonstration day is going to be held to try to engage a little bit more funding towards advancement of it. But the, the reason I'm bringing this up is because e each of these systems or organizations or groups or whatever you want to call them the startups that are trying to get funding for their products include things from a virtual engagement to medicine and personally i i think that range is going to be great now the, the judges also range in that field everything from medicine to pharmaceutical yeah medicine to military to to well personal engagement like uh you know video games and stuff uh let me tell you some of the startups um the first one is called sema learning they they work more on engaging academic learning stuff Learning, learning stuff through VR. That's what they want to do. The next one is called Adventure Labs. And they want to incorporate gaming or like watching games into VR. So you would be able to Twitch, you would be able to watch Twitch streamers or YouTube stars in VR. Assuming this goes well. The next one is called Altwork, and they're they're just trying to build a more cohesive work environment. So those would, assuming it goes well, they they would allow people in the business sector to be able to do their work more effectively. The next one is called Cognivive. This program is to, is intended to help survivors of strokes and neurological trauma rehabilitate through virtual reality. There have been a couple stories about not not just them but other other virtual reality systems working for working for neural problems just search for those in Google or whatever. I may be able to link one to you in the description down below. The next one is called Media. They're trying to incorporate public relations 
into VR. The next one is called Observer Analytics. They're the ones that have been constructing all of the market analytic market analytic data that has said that it's that VR as an industry is going to grow. And the final one is called Tetsuji. Now it says here that their VR Rumble combines VR and AR on the Rumble platform to redefine social experience across live streams. So it sounds like their program would focus more on one of the PlayStation. If they would focus more on something similar to one of the PlayStation patents I talked about recently, where the your your viewers or engagement partners would be able to interact with you on a more personal space. So your audience would be able to interact with you easier than what they currently do. And there are a couple a couple industries of note that you may want to know for the judges and panelists. One of them is David Anderman, formerly of Lucasfilms. The next one is Frank R, I guess. Frank Black and Praveen Gupta of HTC Vive. And one of the other ones is named Jay Shukla of Nivagen Nivagen Pharmaceuticals. So obviously technology, movies, and medicine are all going to come together to try to judge these these supposed panelists or the not the panelists but the proposed startups personally i think that would just be amazing because we're going to get to see quite a few different options here now i don't know if this thing is going to be open to the public but because they released this information to the public, I think I think it's a pretty safe bet to assume that it is going to be available. So I think that's a good place to end for the night. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.